Dear students, in today's topic, we will discuss about the sex linkage and how does it affect both the sexes, that is male and female. The main aim of this topic is to understand how allosomes and certain genes are linked. What are the different types of sex linkages? Why do males have more chances of being affected through X chromosome? Let's take a brief introduction. First of all, I would like to tell about the linkage process. Linkage can be defined as the genes that are present on the same chromosome and are close together to be inherited. Now, what is a sex-linked gene? We can say that the genes that are located on one or other of the sex chromosomes are said to be sex-linked. The sex chromosomes determine whether the individual is male or female. These genes are considered sex-linked because their expression and inheritance pattern differ between males and females. Sex linkage results in an inheritance pattern that differs by genes carried on autosomes. Now, our first objective is how allosomes and certain genes are linked. Beside sex gene, sex chromosomes also contain autosomal genes which codify several proteins related to non-sexual traits. Before that, let's understand what is the difference between autosomes and allosomes. Autosomes can be defined as the chromosomes other than the sex chromosomes. Let's take a look at the karyotype of the humans. Karyotype is a picture of a person's chromosomes. Here we can see the 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair of allosomes. When we see the karyotype of both male and female, we come to the conclusion that the male and female both have the same number of autosomal chromosomes except the allosomes which are different in case of man and woman. Females have two X chromosomes and the males have X and Y. Since the X and Y are different chromosomes they would have different genes. From the karyotype, we can also see that the X chromosome is larger than the Y chromosome. Now, we have seen the karyotype of both males and females. Now, let us talk about types of sex linkages. As we already know that sex linkage is of three types. First type is the genes which are located on X chromosomes and are called X-linked genes. Since both males and females have an X chromosome, so both have X-linked genes. Then there is another type for the genes which are located on Y chromosomes and are called y linked genes or holandric genes. Since only men have Y chromosome, hence we can say that men will show Y linkage. Then the last type of linkage which is found to occur in both X and Y chromosomes. Such genes are called incomplete sex linked genes. Now, 
Let's discuss them in broader terms. First and foremost is the X linkage, which is very important as I told you that it is present in both males and females. But let me highlight this point that males are more often affected by this. It is actually the fault of the X chromosome because the X chromosome is much larger than the Y chromosome. So most sex-linked genes are located on the X chromosome forming X linkage. In addition to carrying genes that are concerned with the determination of female sex characteristics, the X chromosome also carries genes for non-sexual characteristics such as the ability to see particular colors and the ability to clot blood efficiently. X-linked inheritance, it is further divided into two categories that is X-linked dominant inheritance and X-linked recessive inheritance. Now let's see what is the difference between X-linked recessive and X-linked dominant inheritance. Among the sex-linked genes, the recessive ones are more common. In X linkage, a recessive allele is expressed more often in males than in females. Because males carry only one allele for an X linked gene, whereas females have two alleles for the gene. Thus, a female with a recessive allele on one of her X chromosomes will not be affected by it. Just as someone who is heterozygous for a recessive allele on one of the autosomes is unaffected by it. However, a male with a recessive allele on his X chromosome has no dominant allele to counteract it because his Y chromosome lacks the corresponding gene. The phenotype of the male will therefore show the presence of a single recessive allele. Females possessing 1X linked recessive mutation are considered carriers and will generally not manifest clinical symptoms of the disorder. All males possessing an X-linked recessive mutation will be affected since males have only a single X chromosome and therefore have only one copy of X-linked genes. All offspring of a carrier female have a 50% chance of inheriting the mutation if the father does not carry the recessive allele. All female children of an affected father will be carriers, assuming the mother is not affected or a carrier, as daughters possess their father's X chromosome. If the mother is not a carrier, no male children of an affected father will be affected as males only inherit their father's Y chromosome. The common examples of recessive inheritance are Duchenne muscular dystrophy, hemophilia A and B, color blindness and many others. Let's consider an example of a hemophilic person. The royal disease that is hemophilia, it is called as royal disease because hemophilia was prominently seen in the history of European royalty in the 19th and 20th centuries. Britain's Queen Victoria was the carrier female 
for the disease and she passed the mutation to various royal houses through two of her five daughters that are Princess Alice and Princess Beatrice. Victoria's son, Prince Leopold, suffered from the disease. For this reason, hemophilia was once popularly called the royal disease. Here we see the completely red boxes. As we all know in pedigree charts, a square represents a male and a circle a female. The shaded squares or circles define the affected individuals and the half shaded as the heterozygous or carriers for that disease. We can see here that only squares are shaded. That means that only males are affected through this inheritance pattern. But why is it so? The answer is that it is an X-linked trait. If it is an X-linked trait and girl means XX, then why is it only guys are getting it? The half shaded portions mean that it is a carrier and a female. They have the gene, they just don't show it. They are heterozygous, they just carry it. If you notice the sons of the female carriers often have hemophilia. To predict these traits, we are going to use our own Punnett square. Let's see how hemophilia is transferred. Female with hemophilia needs to have a recessive allele that is two little bees for both the X chromosomes and male with hemophilia needs just one. If they have one capital and one small b, then the female is normal, but she is a carrier. The two X's mean that she is a female. Now, when we have an X and a Y, it is a male. The male is going to be hemophilic since he has little b and there is no dominant b to back it up. Now, we are going to do a cross between unaffected male genotype that would be capital X with capital B on it and a Y and an affected female that is capital X small b and capital X small b. We can see from the Punnett square that we will get capital X with capital B on it, capital X and small b. That means she is a female, not affected but a carrier. Then we get a male who is affected and another female, she is heterozygous. That means she is a carrier but she won't show any effects phenotypically. And then we get another male who is affected since he does not have a dominant allele. If a female has both recessive alleles on her X chromosomes, then she is going to pass the disease to 100% male since mother always contributes the X chromosome and in this case, it is recessive for both. She will have 100% normal but carrier daughters. Now let's check another case so that we can get a hemophilic female. For this, we need to have two recessive bees and since each parent contributes to the female X chromosome, that means that father should be hemophilic and mother should be a carrier. Let's see the Punnett square. Here we see that we can have a hemophilic female and a hemophilic male. Here are some characteristics of sex-linked inheritance. It is crisscross inheritance, which means that a parent passes the trait 
to the grandchild of the same sex through offspring of the opposite sex. That is, father passes the traits to grandson through his daughter while the mother transforms traits to her granddaughter through her son. The father does not pass the sex-linked allele of a trait to his son. The same is passed to the daughter from where it reaches the grandson. Mother passes the alleles of a sex-linked trait to both sons and daughters. Majority of the sex-linked traits are recessive. Sex-linked traits are more apparent in males than females. As many as sex-linked traits are harmful, males suffer more than sex-linked disorders. Females generally function as carriers of sex-linked disorders because recessive genes can express themselves in females only in the homozygous state. Most of the sex-linked traits are recessive and some of them are dominant also. Traits seldom appear in both father and son. Trait fails to appear in females unless their father possesses the same and the mother is a carrier. That was the story of X-linked recessive inheritance. And now let's come to another inheritance pattern which is called as X-linked dominant inheritance. What is X-linked dominant inheritance? Let's understand that. We already know that in a female child, one X chromosome comes from mother and the other one from father. Unlike in males, the father contributes the Y chromosome. Hence, we can determine that each child of a mother affected with an X-linked dominant trait has a 50% chance of inheriting the mutation and thus being affected with the disorder. If only father is affected, 100% of the daughters will be affected since they inherit their father's X chromosome and 0% of the sons will be affected since they inherit their father's Y chromosome. Some common examples are Let's see another inheritance pattern that is Y-linked which passes from father to his son since Y chromosome is always given to the male offspring. All the sons of an affected father have the trait and hence trait is Y-linked. Drawing a Punnett square for this inheritance, let's see how it works. Here we recall that female donates X chromosome and male donates Y chromosome to a male offspring. So we can say that Y chromosome will be passed only to the male offspring. Here we see that this is only transferred to males. Now we can understand well that why is it more frequent in males than in females. Let's talk about the X chromosomes. There are more than 1000 genes present on X chromosomes which is definitely more than Y chromosome because it is smaller in size as compared to the X chromosome. We have already seen that females have two X chromosomes and males have an X and a Y chromosome. Since males have only one X chromosome, 
genes on that chromosome not coding for gender are usually expressed in the male phenotype even if they are recessive. Since there are no corresponding genes on the Y chromosome in most cases. In both cases that is dominant as well as recessive allele on X chromosome will express the effect. The one having the recessive allele will have the disease for the, that particular gene and the one having a dominant allele will be a normal man. In women a recessive allele on the X chromosome is often masked in their phenotype by a dominant normal allele on the other. This explains why women are frequently carriers of X-linked traits but more rarely have they expressed in their own phenotypes. Let's take a quick test for the color blindness. What number do you see? You think it's pretty obvious but there are a lot of people who cannot see this. Those who have red-green color blindness. However, 8 to 12 percent of males and only 1 percent of females can't. Now you may be thinking why is there such a difference between men and women? Almost 10 times more men can't see. The reason is that a color blindness trait is a sex linked trait. Let's do a cross to see the frequency and how to predict the inheritance patterns of X linked disorders. We have the genotype of female XX and we have the genotype of males XY. What is the probability of having a girl? The gametes of female are X and X and the gametes of male are X and Y. From the Punnett square we can deduce that 50% offsprings are boys and 50% are girls. As already discussed men and women both inherit X-linked traits. In addition to X-linked traits men inherit Y-linked traits since only men get Y chromosomes. So if you are a man you are going to inherit XY and if you are a female you are going to get XX. That is two copies of X chromosome. Some X-linked traits are male baldness and red green color blindness. Let's see how this was discovered. Thomas Hunt Morgan who lived from 1866 to 1945 was the pioneer for the chromosomal theory of inheritance. He first described in 1910 the inheritance of a sex linked trait that is white eye color in Drosophila. He found that most flies have red eyes and he called it wild type. Wild type means that phenotype most individuals will exhibit in the population. He realized that female flies have wild type gene and male flies either have wild type and some of them have mutant type. The wild type is denoted by a plus sign and mutant type has no sign. It turned out that only the males show white eyes and females never have white eyes and he concluded that it must be linked to sex chromosome somehow or this is a sex linked gene. In humans it is X and Y chromosomes same way as flies. He realized that these female flies have the gene for eye color on X chromosome. He did some crosses with these flies. Morgan in his experiment crossed the white eyed male he had found to a normal female and he looked to see which trait 
was dominant in the F1 generation. In the F1 generation, all the progeny had red eyes. Now, the question arises, would the white eye trait reappear, segregating in the F2 progeny as Mendel had predicted? In the F2, there were 3,470 red-eyed flies and 782 white-eyed flies, that is a roughly ratio of 3 is to 1. Allowing for some deficiency in recessives, this was not unlike what Mendel's theory predicted. But in this first experiment, there was a result that was not predicted by Mendel's theory. All the white-eyed flies were male. At this point, Morgan had never seen a white-eyed fly that was female. The simplest hypothesis was that such flies were inviable. This might also explain the deficiency of recessives in the 3 is to 1 ratio above. Perhaps the white-eyed trait somehow killed female flies preferentially. Crossing red-eyed F2 females back to the original white-eyed male, he obtained 129 red-eyed females, 132 red-eyed males and 88 white-eyed females, 86 white-eyed males. Again, this was a rather poor fit to the expected 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio due to a deficiency in recessives. The important thing, however, was that there were fully 88 white-eyed female flies. Clearly, it was not impossible to be a female and white-eyed. So he concluded that it was due to the X linkage of white eye color in Drosophila. Since females have two X chromosomes, the recessive allele will be masked by the dominant allele and males only have one copy of allele on each chromosome. Hence, there would not be any allele to mask the effect of the recessive or dominant allele and male will exhibit both eye, red and white eye colors, whereas female will exhibit only dominant trait. But at the same time, it is also possible for females to exhibit a recessive trait if she has a recessive allele for both the X chromosomes. Hence, we conclude from this that males are more often affected by sex-linked disorders than females. This was all about today's topic and I hope you have understood it.